Good morning, everyone, on this Wednesday, um, first Wednesday in this Advent season. We today um, will have worship at 7 p.m. at church with the Holden Evening Prayer and then a, an activity of service afterwards. So you're invited to that if you get this message on time. Um, if otherwise, I um, encourage you to dwell in the word in this time of Advent as we um, are prepared. <laughs> once again, and are given once again that word of Christ in our midst. I'm jumping the gun. So we gather this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God, who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. Well, we are in our daily grace and I'd love to hear your opinion if we could, we, did, we started this kind of mid-year, if we wanna find a book for 2022. Can you believe I'm saying that? Or what we'd like to do today is by Daryl McDavid, and our text is John 1, 1 through 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Our God is a God of words. As human beings, we know the power of words. We are unique among the animal kingdom for our ability to speak, to write, and to enclose as much as we can of the human heart in permutations of rather odd looking symbols. Being made in God's own image means that there is power and wonder in words. The Gospel of John begins with an exquisite example of literary parallelism, the three independent clauses with their rep repetition of the word, bring gloriously as we build gloriously as we learn that when the word was, where the word was, and finally, who the word was. The word was God himself. With verse two, the structure becomes what English teachers who take themselves too seriously, guilty, like to call a chiasmus. A chiasmus is a rhetorical structure where the second half of the parallel sentence reverses itself as it often charted with an X. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. X, the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. The chiasmus is also named for the Greek letter chai, often written as an X. Chai became a particularly popular letter for decorating medieval gospel manuscripts because chai and rho, shaped like a P, were shorthand for the name who most famously bore those letters at the beginning of his name, Christos. The Book of Kells on display at Trinity College in Dublin has a stunning example of the medieval Cairo ornately illustrated and filling the entire manuscript page top to bottom. At the most basic structure level within the filament of the sentences themselves, we see God cry out the truth of his son, the revelation of the glory of Christ. The word became the man, the name of a man. The word it became flesh because words are not enough to save us. No matter what stories we tell and what songs we sing, there's only one power in the universe strong enough to bring us back to the beginning. In the end, the X or the chai turned on its side to become the wood of the cross. So X becomes <laughs> Christ hung on the beams and breathed out his last earthly words for our salvation from the beginning of time to the end of the ages. So a little fun little fact here, when we say Xmas, we're actually not wrong. 
we have done so much work to say that's so wrong. We shouldn't abbreviate Christmas. Well, it's actually just using the Greek letter, chai, chai, or, um, for Christmas. Cairo is Christ. Interesting, isn't that? So we aren't wrong, even though I think we don't know why we do that, right? It feels like we're just abbreviating, which we are, but when you don't know what you're abbreviating, it feels like you're taking Christ out of Christmas. And that, oh, that is something that will make people angry. Um, all of our Starbucks fights over what's on the holiday cup here in Starbucks land. Um, and, and how are we supposed to properly um, celebrate this season as Hanukkah began on Sunday? We are in the midst of Advent. Uh, it's such a complicated time. I do find it curious, and I'm just gonna be controversial today. So that at the kids' school, they can talk about Hanukkah, but they can't talk about Christmas, the teachers can't. I do wonder about that and, uh, and how, um, Sometimes we are so sensitive that we are, um, we don't give equal footing to everything. It's a curious thing when a dominant part of culture becomes something that because of dominance is looked down upon. We do that a lot of, um, in order to lift up the um, other, other holidays, other, other beliefs, other cultures, other systems, we diminish or we silence another and almost make it as if that one has something wrong with it. That person, that thing, that, um, that season, that culture needs to be muted, needs to be erased in order for others to have space. And I so wish there was another way to do it because it's bringing such heartache. It's bringing such pain um, when, when that is, projected onto identity, projected onto things that we can't change about ourselves, circumstances that were out of our control. Awareness is not enough anymore, it seems. We must turn that, that on ourselves into a, like a hate loop of ourselves. And I'm sick of it. And it's hard to be hearing it and it's exhausting and it's not the solution to um, focus on just erasing or deprecating or silencing um, in order to create space. How, how to do it better? I don't have the answer for that either. Um, and we do need to do it better. But right now we're, we're transvaluating and that just isn't helpful. So as you have your Starbucks cup and whatever flavor it is, um, whatever is on those cups this year, I don't even know. It's kind of like the pumpkin spice permeation in all things and in all people that everything ends up, even the joke that we should have hot pumpkin spice communion wafers. That just seems so horrible to me <laughs> in so many ways. Um, peppermint, Christmas ones. I mean, we can be heretical, right? <laughs> But back to here about other than the abbreviation of Christ as Xmas, um, Christmas, if you read it in Greek, the mass, I don't, mass is of course the mass of Christ, the mass is the Catholic worship, the, um, the elevation of Christ in worship um, is mass, part of that. Anyway, we are in words and we can get lost in the words, right? We can get lost in the, in the abstract. But the beauty of this chiastic text of in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. There is a beauty in John in these first verses, a beauty in the Greek, a beauty in the literary piece of showing just how intentional God is in the creation of the universe through Christ, the word that is spoken in the written word and in that word coming to us, known to us as a who when the infinite logos, which means verb, which means the, um, that it's, it's much more than just word, it's all encompassing. That infinite comes finite, 
comes into our world, limiting, um, vulnerable, and ultimately dying for us. There's a beauty in that, but the beauty is not in just the word reverent, um, the word revered, the Bible set up on pedestals. It is in the digging in and the saying, this is for you. This God came for you and for your neighbor and for the ones who don't believe the same that you believe. How do we do this? How do we share our faith that Christ is the way, the truth and the life? And also not create that deprecating, painful trudge of history over time. That humbleness is needed, that understanding is needed, and also the trust that God finds a way, and you might be the way into somebody's um, heart as you share the story of Christmas. When I was first coming, came up to the States after being in Guatemala to um, serve in a church up here, we did a, um, a time of uh, VBS for kids where we did the Christmas story and the neighborhood kids didn't know it. They hadn't been taught the Christmas story. So don't assume that your grandkids or your neighbors or your friends know the Christmas story. They might know that not know that Xmas is Christmas and that what that really means of Christ coming to us. So check your assumptions, perhaps be humble and share the good news with your neighbor, with your friends, with your family. Once again, be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. For the wind that blows all around, the pine needles that fall, the trees that are laid bare, and the restfulness of the season, enveloped in many places, in the blanket of snow, or the moss growing once again all over the place, reminding us that life continues, even where we sometimes would prefer it didn't on our rooftops and in other places, God. But it reminds us as we see it that there's so much more life happening than when we're aware of. And you sustain so many things that we are not um, cognizant of, that we fail to understand and know. But yet today, we take time to graciously receive. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray. We pray for Paula and Donald as they travel. We pray for Bob as he settles into um, a new care facility. We pray for those recovering from from surgery at home and having waited for it for a while. We pray for those whose surgeries were postponed. We pray for those who are ill, those who are lonely. We pray for caregivers and the need that they have for rest. We pray for all of those in need of the many ways that healing can come and is needed that Christ, the word, comes to them and with healing and with the word of forgiveness. We pray for the gifts of relationship with others. We pray as we grieve, as life causes decisions to be made that impact communities and churches and families. And um, we give thanks for 
the people in our lives and how we, we um, were blessed by them. For the communion of faith in your church, Lord, continue to bring us together, continue to send us forward and out and around and down and deep in um, your abundant life that you give us as a community. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for the Supreme Court today. We pray for all of our states of this union. May we be one out of many. We pray for leaders in countries throughout the world. And for people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, we pray as well. All of us, us in the sense of we all are living in the same planet. So we are an us who are experiencing the horrors that we can do to each other or experience in life that strife, that challenge, wondering where peace could possibly be. We ask for daily bread. We pray for provision and we pray for um, your presence as we navigate between cultures and between circumstances. For all who work for peace and international harmony, thank you for their work and may we all have part of it. And for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, Lord, we rejoice and we ask you to call us into that work as well. For the church of Jesus Christ in every land, gather us in in your light, Lord, and send us out with that light into the world. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen. <laughs>